There's Skype from New York. Uh, let's start. Alex, Tennessee, Laura and Eva from right to left. I think I've got that right. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Let me start with you, Alex. Um, I suppose the first question really is, when you were talking to these people who were in the documentary, um, how did they come across? Did they come across as sane, as rational? They did, yeah. You know, it was surprising. I, I was sort of expected, expected a little bit more, uh, you know, in, insanity, to put it bluntly. But they were all very calm and collected, focused, uh, and even to some degree, you know, intelligent. They came off as, as, uh, as quite smart. I mean, it's funny, isn't it, why we think that is surprising? Because a number of people across the United States, and, well, frankly, across the world, believe that at some point there will be a second coming, there will be a rapture, the world will come to an end. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's it's. Uh, I think a big part of it for a lot of people is just is just as it's said in the film is knowing, uh, is knowing what's going to happen. You know, that's sort of the eternal question uh, of man. You know, what will happen? When will it end? Uh, you know, what will happen in the next life, for instance? And this this movement provided uh, or provides provided answers uh, for those questions. And I think that's uh, reassuring for a lot of people. Sure, Tennessee hiding in the back there. Um, what were your impressions of the group? How did you track them down? Um, well, in New York City, they had a presence outside subway stations and in Herald Square, um, Times Square. So it was a building movement. You could see more and more of these folks out um, handing out the tracks. And then actually, because of the Internet, we were able to find them by posting a message to a, a meetup group that they have, and which is a way that they use to organize and decide where they're going to go, where they're going to pass that information. And so uh, sent a message saying that we were interested. And Matthew, the character of our film, was one of the first people to get back to us. Sure. I mean, uh, Laura, does it seem strange to you that people are actually attracted to a group like this? You'd think that a group saying the world is going to end, people would want to stay away from. You know, I think that it really speaks to the fundamental need that people have to find community and find community in whatever way they can. And just as people want to feel like they have the answers, they also want to have a community to share that with. So I but, think people find it comforting. Sure, sure. But the fact is, Eva, that um, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, the man who's behind the prophecy, he suggested that the world was going to come to an end in 1994, and he was wrong. And those parts of uh, the world that uh, haven't been destroyed by earthquakes or whatever so far today, they're all thinking once again, He's got it wrong. How will that affect the group generally, do you think? Um, well, I think the last time it was mostly a miscalculation, or what he said was a mis miscalculation. And I think probably um, they will go by the same thing again. Uh, they kind of, they, if that's what they believe, they will probably find, uh, you know, new ways to... To explain kind of it away. Right. New math. <laughs> new, new math. So, so that was his excuse... Um, back in the 90s that he'd got, he just got his calculations wrong, Alex. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He, uh, I, I don't know how he pulled it off. I, it's hard to imagine people put, you know, wholeheartedly putting their lives into, uh, you know, into this belief, having it be wrong, and then just sort of saying, oh, he, you know, got it wrong. Let's, you know, let's try again. And, uh, you know, I think maybe that'll, maybe that'll happen again. He also said that, um, that he found information about a false prophecy in the Bible. So that was another explanation, that a, one false prophecy before the actual judgment day would take place. Right. Uh, so he's sure. got a get-out clause. <laughs> but he has an answer for everything. They're sure, very sure. But one, one um, admittedly, he's an atheist that I spoke to a little bit earlier on today, said this guy is rolling in money. He's made millions out of his so-called group. Um, was that the impression that you were getting from his followers, that um, they were simply handing over money willy-nilly, blindly, to this man? Uh, money was, was, was never discussed, and, uh, and when, it, when it, we did try to bring it up, people were very adamant in that there's no solicitation of money by Family Radio, the organization that Harold Camping uh, you know, heads up. It's all donation-based, but I think that part of it is that people when they accept this, they're, you know, they're inclined to donate money to further the cause and to help it, and that's uh, raised a good deal of money for, for health camping. And a quick question to all of you. Um, were any of you convinced by any of the rhetoric that you heard on the streets when you talked to any of these guys, or do you, you're all smiling, do you think they're all nuts? <laughs> we're waiting, we're waiting for the earthquake. We're here <laughs> partying, waiting for it. 
It's 6 p.m. Uh, local time. We still have an hour and a half. So, so yeah, there's an hour and a half to go. That's right. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully we'll give you a call just to check that you're still going to be there. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, Alex, Tennessee, Laura, Eva, it's good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.